Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Now, now, I don't exactly know when it was that this series started getting silly. I know it was a process. Maybe it was somewhere between four and five. Letty getting amnesia for a movie and a half, maybe. Uh, I really don't know. And, and you know what? At this point, I don't care. But by the time this franchise had its heroes on the spur of the moment, driving a car from the middle of one skyscraper clear over to the middle of another skyscraper, well, by then, this franchise was fully immersed in Crazy Town. At that point, you could either look at these movies as harmless cartoons, like the mid-range James Bond movies, like cinematic junk food, or as incomprehensible garbage based on your tolerance level. Now we have The Fate of the Furious, which focuses so much on the big, ridiculous action scenes that nothing in between them, not the plot, not the relationships between the characters, which has been a major selling point up till now, no effort is made to make any of those things make any darn sense at all. Even the internal logic to action scenes is sometimes hard to track. The opening scene, set in Cuba, contains an admittedly exciting street race, but nothing about the way that the race plays out, the way the characters end up racing in the first place, how they prepare for the race, what the characters do during the race, and how the spectators react to the race both during and after it, makes any damn sense at all. It's just a cool look at race that ends in an outrageously silly way. And that's just the movie's opening salvo. In The Fate of the Furious, characters will end up knowing how to operate machines they've never seen before, can fire harpoons precisely where they need to be without even aiming them, and know the exact layouts of buildings that they just happen to drive straight into a moment before. Not only that, they find themselves working with a man who murdered their best friend a few movies back. And they, they actually play out beat for beat the tired old buddy movie cliche of rivals who hate each other, then they grow to love each other by the end of the movie. Hey, 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 this guy murdered Han. He murdered him. And he also killed an entire hospital full of people. And now that you're out on a mission together, you want to bond over a beer with this dude? That's not the only dynamic that doesn't make any sense. It's only one of several in which two characters behave a certain way towards each other in one scene that just feels forced, as if the story needs them to act this way. We know, of course, from the trailer that Dominic Toretto betrays his team and seemingly goes rogue. Now, there's a lot more to his situation than meets the eye, and I can tell you, thankfully, without spoilers, it's not brainwashing. Seriously, after Letty getting amnesia, I couldn't take a brainwashing plot. But there are several scenes in which he's face to face with someone for a full few seconds, and he has the opportunity to give them some sort of hint to say something. Come on, even just a little wink, anything to reassure them. And instead he just stares at them blankly, because to say anything at all in that moment would tip the movie's hand. It just feels unnatural. Speaking of which, Charlize Theron's character's motivations are so murky and unexplained, her confidence so misplaced, I don't really think she's nearly as formidable or as spooky as the movie seems to think she is. No wonder her character's name is Cypher. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit on the nose, but what do you want from a movie that trots out the same old tired cliched lines like, this one's off the books, or your records have been wiped clean, or we're going off the grid, baby. Uh, come on. When the characters aren't spouting cliches, they're either mumbling tech speak or shady government speak that's clearly just nonsense gobbledygook. So of course they would name their unclearly defined villain Cypher. And yet, and yet, a lot of the action still works and provides a little bit of pulse racing fun. I dare say that there are a few action scenes in this film, like a prison riot that's kinda cool and a, a fight on board a plane and one scene of automotive mayhem set in New York City that I wouldn't dare spoil for you, but it showed me something that I haven't seen before and that right there is often enough to secure a recommendation from me, originality in the action staging. But, but by the time we get to the cluster uh, cluster bomb of a finale, with multiple action scenes in multiple locations going on while the primary villain isn't even participating in any of it, just sort of barking orders into a microphone. Uh, honestly, I forgot for a long while where she was actually located. Uh, was she in the plane or the submarine? I forgot! But that finale scene is emblematic of the movie as a whole. It gives you some really cool visuals, some exciting action beats, and then just as you're kind of getting into it and getting all pumped up, a moment will come along, like what The Rock does with a torpedo at one point, or, uh, huh, let's just see, uh, no spoilers, uh, how about the ultimate resting place of Dominic Toretto? That just makes you say, okay, uh, oh god, that was pretty freaking stupid. Just, no, I reject it now. Look, 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 you already know if you're gonna see this movie this weekend. All right, you know it. You're either gonna see it or you're not. I won't try to dissuade you. Personally, for me, I saw it in a theater equipped with Dolby Vision and Atmos Sound, where the seats actually rattled and boomed all the way throughout the movie. It was the perfect way to experience the fate of the furious as a literal 
theme park ride. I almost, despite all of my misgivings, gave it a mild recommendation as a sort of guilty pleasure. But this movie cheats. It cheats plot congruity. It cheats physics. It cheats internal character logic. And ultimately, it did all of these things consistently enough to cheat itself out of a recommendation from me. Small bag of popcorn for this goofy, ridiculous wall of nearly incomprehensible noise that may have rattled my chair from time to time, but not enough to ultimately blow my hair back. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the fate of the Furious in the comments as well. If it got your motor running, be sure to let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I'd never turn my back on family. But I've turned my back on this franchise, I'll tell you that.